This is about detection of patterns. We're trying to classify or separate two classes of objects. Um, so machine learning systems, for example, could take a huge data set of, of you know, enormous size um, and enormous dimension and, and try to find patterns within that data set. Anybody, anybody who shopped with Amazon knows that when they, they log on to Amazon, they get uh, recommendations. Well, behind that lies a very sophisticated mathematical algorithm. To my mind, machine learning is, is a sort of, uh, it's quite a large area of research activity involving computer scientists, engineers, statisticians, mathematicians, in which the, the underlying aim is to deal with very large data sets and to perform what might be regarded as cognitive type tasks on them. In particular, the, the recognition of certain patterns inherent in the data, uh, the detection, uh, for example, of uh, unusual patterns. Um, its primary focus is, is to try to understand how intelligent systems work and to create intelligent systems. Artificial intelligence probably goes further back than machine learning as currently conceived. I mean, machine learning is currently conceived as heavily dependent on the enormous power that computers now have. Whereas artificial intelligence has long been a sort of scientific project, a very ambitious one to try and literally model brains and to create artificial brains, perhaps. Uh, the focus on machine learning applications is slightly more practical in that its, its aim is not to produce systems that would perform as well as a real brain, but to, to try to develop systems that detect patterns, which is one of the key things that real brains are very good at. There's a number of tasks that to us seem quite easy as humans. I mean, facial recognition is a classic example. If you think about it, it's quite a difficult task because people look different, slightly different every time you see them, but yet you will recognize them. So somehow our brain is doing something quite clever there that standard computers find hard to do. A standard computer would need, a, would need an, a description of what a particular person looked like and would probably fail to recognize that particular person again if their face was at a different angle or if they had a different hairstyle or something like that. The brain is very good at these learning or generalization tasks where it may only need to see something a few times and, and then it will, it will recognize it in the future. I, I mean another sort of uh, example is um, handwriting. Um, there are now good machine learning systems for hand, handwritten digit and letter recognition but it, it's it's a difficult task because a particular letter, letter A, for instance, could be written in many different ways. It could be slanted, it could be written in uh, capital or, or lowercase. It's very difficult to give an explicit description of what the letter A looks like. A computer, a computer that learns can see for itself at various examples of the letter A, and it can it, hopefully generalize from that, by which I mean that it won't just recognize a subsequent letter A if it's one of the ones it's seen, but it will have extracted what the features of a letter A are in general terms. It will have generalized from the data that it's seen. That's what, that, that's what learning in this sense means. Learning is about extracting from a large data set general information about what the concept you're trying to learn is. Many practical machine learning applications have commonalities. They're about detecting patterns or classifying into two classes or detecting anomalous behavior or clustering together examples uh, or objects that are similar in some sense. Whether you're working on finance or whether you're working on medicine, you want to have general techniques for clustering data or for separating data into two classes. There's a danger that people too close to the problem can't see the wood for the trees. They're too focused on the, the domain of application and sometimes the approaches that might work best in practice actually need less specific expert domain opinion. We're working backwards from specific applications to generic problems about data handling to then general approaches to how to solve those problems. And it's at that level of generality that it then makes a great sense to try and model things mathematically so that you can get an insight into what's going to work and, uh, and, and what may not work. It's not just the, the fact that you want to learn from data or you want to classify data, but you want to do so in a way that scales up sensibly. There's, there's little use in having algorithmic approaches to solving these problems when the, the, the time that the algorithm takes, it grows exponentially with the size of the problem. It's got to scale up nicely, otherwise it's, you know, for, for even moderately large 
data sets going, going to be useless. And data sets are potentially enormous. There's a huge amount of data out there, almost too much to cope with. To be honest, what motivates my work is, is interesting mathematical problems that have their genesis in issues raised by machine learning. I think of myself as an applicable mathematician. It's quite nice to know that the mathematics I, I do at some level is potentially useful. But for me, the reason why I do this particular line of research and why I've enjoyed doing it is because it's interesting mathematics. It draws in a range of ideas from probability theory, geometry, linear algebra, complexity theory. It's, it, it's, it's interesting mathematically. If it wasn't interesting mathematically, I'd probably be doing something else.